and I'm so grateful that you're here on this channel. I share easy DIYs, home, and encouraging messages through a creative form. In today's video, we are going to DIY a bit. Soon when I'll be sharing a dining room makeover with you guys, doing on a very tight budget. So anything that we can make ourselves, that's the direction that we're going in, which just so happened to be our kitchen bench. I'm just going to take you through the process of how we did it and how to add a bohemian vibe to it. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that notification bell for when that dining room makeover comes out so you can see how this bench is styled in there and if you haven't already done so don't forget to also hit the subscribe button we're gonna jump right into this video it's saturday morning and we are going to run some errands i actually have a nail in my car so we are going to get that fixed first but then we're going to go to lowe's to pick up the wood and accessory that we need to build the bench for our dining area i just have these visions and then I just think that is crazy. But when I actually start becoming more specific about what we need, how it's gonna fit or how it's gonna work, it gets me so excited that it's coming together, the very thing that was once a vision. using an extra wood piece to drill into it so you know exactly where you want to drill your holes and to make sure that the drill bite is the correct size. We found it much easier to build the four smaller wood pieces together to form the rectangular leg shape of the bench. Standard upright pre-drill holes in all four corners. You should be able to drill into the top piece and the longer piece underneath it. That way, the holes are already lined up when it's time to drill in the nails, cutting down your drilling time. Is it straight? It's like it's about as straight as the other one. Both legs are done. And then these larger pieces are gonna go on top to create the seating. These two pieces are not screwed together. The two longer wooden panels will be joined together by the drilling of the legs into both pieces. So it's important to measure how far wide and long to position the legs. Because our bench is quite long, we wanted the legs further out. As you can see, my husband is marking where we're gonna be drilling the holes, but eventually we realized that this was unnecessary for us. Now, if you are a detailed oriented person, by all means do this part, but we eventually just eyeballed where the nails were going to go. Now repeat the step of pre-drilling and then drilling the nails. And for extra security, we drilled in six nails total on both legs. And now you have your very own handmade bench. And I'm really excited about this because it looks so good and it was quite easy to do. We've actually been sitting on this bench for about two weeks now testing it out and it has not broken. The nail hasn't popped out. My husband and I both been sitting on it. There's no crackling sound. You know, when you sit on something, you're like, mm. This don't feel right, but we didn't have any of that. So now we are going to move on and begin staining it and giving it that bohemian vibe. So I'm going to break down our entire balcony and use it as a makeshift to start prepping the bench. wanted to make this DIY as easy as possible for you guys so I'm just gonna show you what I picked up and I literally went to the store found someone who is an expert in this area and asked them a ton of questions the bench color definitely has this subtle grayish blue 
tone to it. The guy was telling me that the one that we should get is called Rustic Beige. But what I didn't know then that I know now, and y'all saw the inspo photo, is that if you are trying to achieve a certain wood stay similar to a picture you saw online, choose a wood stain that's more of a solid color versus a semi-transparent. Because I have a very pine color wood, the stain would have taken me forever to get to that point. This is a very light, transparent color. But I was not pleased with this one. There was nothing wrong with the wood stain itself. It was just not the right one for the look that I was going for. So I ended up going back to the store, picking out weather oak, trying it on the bench. But at this point, it was too late because I already had that lavender grayish tone peeking through the wood and now I'm trying to put a lighter tone on top of it. So at this point I'm like freaking out because I don't know what to do and my only option in my mind at the time is to paint it but I did not want to go that route. So I go back to my tried and true and I pull out Provincial 211 and I stain the entire bench. I applied very light coats to this bench. If you ever use Provincial 211, it's a dark stain and I was afraid that this stain color will look similar to our wooden floors. But once I applied that light coat and let it dry, it came out exactly how I want it. So I'm taking a bit of a break right now. I've been working on this bench all day. I started at 11, it's currently four o'clock right now. Jeez, but that's also with me running to the store, uh, playing around with the color, and you have to let the stain dry in between times. Now for my favorite part, to add a boho feel to it, we're gonna be adding macrame cord to the bench. Now, if you are into farmhouse or rustic, you could definitely leave it as is. So what you'll need for this part is some macrame cord. You'll need at least two rolls. I will leave this exact one linked down below in the description box. And then a lot of crazy glue, specifically the one with the precision tip. I ended up going through four packs of a two pack crazy glue. Financially wise, this is the smartest option where I got it from Walmart for $1.77. Everywhere else, just for one, it was about $2. So we're not gonna cover the entire top part because obviously we have the legs there, but the macrame cord is gonna go right in the middle between the two legs. Next step is very simple. It will just require a lot of time and a lot of patience. <laughs> But I like simplicity and I found that this was the easiest way to go about creating a macrame bench. There are a couple of ways to go about attaching that first macrame cord to begin setting it up for the rest of your bench. You can either staple it, glue it, or like here, just double tie it. I decided to go for the last option in case I wanted to move it because this will be the beginning of how your macrame cords will line up. Everything from here is self-explanatory. Take dots of glue and place them beside the macrame cord that's already down, and then place your new cord right beside it. The great thing about Crazy Glue is that it has a very strong bond and it dries quickly. I went to the store to try to figure out if there was any other option, like a bigger container of Crazy Glue. But when I asked an employee, he was telling me that Crazy Glue would be the best or the most ideal option for macrame in a bench this long. At first, I thought that I needed a book or a vase to hold down the string, but over time I realized that I didn't. And you're gonna see that it has not budged, and this was like under 20 seconds. From here, you're literally going to just be doing the same steps over and over, wrapping around, putting dots of crazy glue, and attaching the macrame. Put on your favorite show or movie and get to DIYing. I'm gonna tell you that I love you 100 times a day You'll get tired of my voice That's how much I'm gonna tell you that I miss and using a precision tip will allow you to have control over how much glue you release from the bottle and where you're going to put it. Something that I started to do later on was to put a bit of glue at the ends of the bench where it curves over because we will be sitting on this and there will be a lot of abrasion on that part. But you only need a little screw, just a little bit because this stuff is so strong. You're probably noticing that the macrame is curving, which is almost inevitable, especially if you're looking at how many cores there are right now that I've glued to this bench, like 50 something. <laughs> but all I'm doing now is straining it up and I'm gonna show you later on on how to fill those gaps. That's how much I'm gonna tell you that I want you. I wanna let you know We 
much left. Coming down to the countdown. Okay, it doesn't work like that, babe. Y'all, three days later and we have made it to the end of this bench. So all we're gonna do is fill in the gaps where the macrame was bulging. And you're just gonna snip off a piece of macrame core that actually fits in that spot. And repeating the same steps, take the crazy glue, apply a little bit of glue along the macrame core and fill in that space. But what's really gonna give this a flush look is using Mod Podge. Mod Podge is not only a glue, but it's a sealer. And you just need a little bit, apply it on top of those added pieces and let it dry and it's gonna look seamless. And y'all, we have the most beautiful bohemian bench, all handmade. I'm gonna let everyone know about my love, so I really hope you love me. this video i hope you guys enjoyed it i really wanted to be as transparent with you guys as possible this bench turned out way beyond what i expected i wanted to just share the good and the bad so that y'all can see the problems that we had because sometimes we often only show just the good part in social media but i definitely wanted to be as honest with you guys but i absolutely love it and don't forget to subscribe for the dining room makeover because it's coming up soon and it is going to be super sweet but if you made this far in the video our dining room is going to be a bistro vibe so not your typical like apartment dining room but a bistro style setting and i just got done with the move board and i cannot wait to show you how we want to bring it all together and i cannot wait for y'all to see it and as always y'all i will talk to you all later